would not have purchased an extended warranty that only added 13,000 miles. Do you have anything to indicate what you actually paid for? We did see one, but we never received any paperwork. Were you denied your claim originally, or did you seek the warranty paperwork and then find out they weren't going to cover it? Fantastic. Let me go ahead and just swear the parties. Hey, court nerds, welcome back. I don't know about you, but I've always been skeptical of extended warranties. I've had them and not used them. I always wondered if the upsell was a scam. Then I watched this case, and now I'm even more skeptical. One thing for sure, I've definitely learned a lot after watching how this case ended and how I'll be addressing the extended warranty situation in the future. Now let's watch as what Miss Roberts right, thought was Ms. covered Roberts, turned out to be documented for far less. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, in May of 2020, I purchased a pre-owned 2019 VW Atlas from Capital Chevrolet Inc., which included a manufacturer's six-year 72,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. I also purchased an additional extended warranty from Capital Chevrolet for $2,000, which was supposed to cover my vehicle up to 107,858 miles. At the time of the purchase, the extended warranty provided was incorrectly documented as only covering up to 60,000 miles, which is less than the manufacturer's warranty. And Capital Chevrolet, without our knowledge or without me seeing, the warranty sent a different and unsigned warranty to Allstate to remedy the mistake, showing coverage of 72 months or 85,000 miles. That's the one they submitted to Allstate and I never received it or signed it. It's unsigned. Um, in March of 2023, my vehicle required significant repairs, including an engine replacement estimated at $11,296. At this point, we discovered that Capital Chevrolet had submitted the wrong warranty and we were not covered for the repairs. I visited the dealership and he confirmed that um, Anthony Hernandez confirmed the 2000 warranty should have covered my vehicle up to 107,000 miles and acknowledged the mistake. We are seeking $20,000 in uh, damages. How is the $20,000 calculated? So the damages would just be the oh, cost of 11,296. Yeah. Our attorney recommended an amount of 20,000. Only get actual damages. So plead what it really is. So it's 11,296 11, is the actual damage? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And what is the 11,296? That's the cost it was to recover the entire engine needed to be replaced um, at that at 99,000 miles. Okay. All right, then. Mr. Strawley, would you like to make a statement now or would you like to wait to the conclusion of plaintiff's case? I might make just a short statement, Your Honor. Sure. Um, yeah, it, this is an unfortunate situation. Um, we came in at this the, time. The issue um, that and then we is, just... Your Honor, the documents, if you, Your Honor will view the documents, you will see regardless whether of whether Capital Chevrolet made a mistake on the mileage, which they did and they corrected, um, the documents preclude recovery here. Um, the service contract that Ms. Roberts purchased allowed up to 85,000 miles of coverage. That means 85,000 miles on the odometer. And the engine blew at 99,000, just under 100,000 miles. So we're almost 15,000 miles past the warranty. And, and that's the problem. Even though this is an unfortunate situation, um, you know, she had well exceeded the warranty uh, the extended warranty that she purchased and, and therein lies the problem so you know the whole we made a mistake on the eighty five thousand. that's true and and that was fixed but it's also irrelevant to the, the claims in this case so um, and I, i'll sh when you see the documents you'll see that your honor well, thank you very much then those are good opening statements i know exactly what it is that we're, we're here about i know what we're listening for uh, I understand that. All right, then. So, Ms. Roberts, let me take, let me hear some direct testimony, kind of fleshing out more of what you told me there, because your statement was very nice. So, you said that you purchased a pre-owned Volkswagen, is that correct? Okay. And that purchase occurred in what year and month? Um, I believe it was in May of 2020, May of, around May 25th, right? All right. And what kind of car was it? It's a Volkswagen Atlas, year 2019. And at the time you purchased the vehicle, how many miles were on it? 30, I'm gonna say 22,858. 
Okay. And the manufacturer offered a warranty that went through 72,000 miles bumper to bumper. All right. You said the extended warranty that you purchased covered it for? Our understanding was it would cover the vehicle up to 107,000 miles. And why did, how did you come to that understanding? So, yeah, they're basically on the service contract. There is a, uh, a form that was filled out that added 80, um, the 85,000 miles to, to the warranty, the, the discrepancy um, is that it, they checked the wrong box. So instead of adding that 85,000 to the existing mileage, it, it basically just set the end date, uh, expiration at 85,000 miles total. So that's where the dispute is arising. Y'all believe that it was 85 plus the current mileage Mr. Right. Starling's position is that it's just 85,000 no matter what. And at the very least, it was 107 miles based on the information that we received as to how they calculated an extended warranty. We would not have purchased an extended warranty that only added 13,000 miles to the manufacturer's warranty for $2,000. Added to the fact that the right. warranty that they had me sign only covered up to 60,000 miles and then they submitted as a warranty to Allstate I had never seen. Okay, so you went to the dealership, you purchased a vehicle, at the time of the purchase, you bought an extended warranty. Mm -hmm. Did you get any paperwork that day in May of 2020 related to the extended warranty? No. No. Uh, Roberts, did you receive I, any paperwork about the extended warranty the day that you purchased it? No, yes. no we yeah. did not. Well, what about the one that I the one that I signed? That was sixty thousand miles. That we, was a mistake. We never received that. I signed it though. But we never received it. We did we did sign we did see one, but we never received any paperwork. And that's not the one that they submitted. They submitted an an alternate one to Allstate that was unsigned. And the manager we talked to said they they'd never seen that happen before. Okay. They recognized their mistake and submitted a different warranty. I, I got that. I'm just trying to figure out your mindset in May. You're at the dealership. You have just toured a car. You've decided on a car. Mm -hmm. You've decided to buy an extended warranty. Yes. When you left the dealership, did you leave with any paperwork at all? Yes. The con the, the purchase agreement contract, but no warranty uh, contract. Okay. So you don't actually have a copy of the thing that you're suing over. We do now. We we have since gotten a copy of that, and it was ex it was added as exhibit. Um, well, both of the contracts, the one that was signed, uh, that was exhibit uh, B, and I actually got that from Chevy Capital uh, Chevy <laughs> Capital Chevy. Sorry, I always get mix mixed up, but I got that from Capital Chevy um, in 2023. And that was the first time we'd ever seen that. That was never submitted to Allstate. Exhibit D is the so, one. Hold, was, Mr. Mr. Roberts, hold on. Yeah, I apologize. Here, that's okay. I just want to know if you what you got. So y'all left and you don't actually have a copy of anything you signed except the purchase agreement. So you didn't get a copy when you signed it in May of the thing you spent $2,000 on. Right. And you didn't think anything about that. And that's totally fine. I'm not blaming you for that. I'm just making it clear to me that y'all don't actually have a copy of the thing you signed. Well, we had it signed and then they had it on record. But no. Yeah, but it turned out they made a mistake. What I'm asking is like, you know, when you leave the store or the restaurant, I've got a copy of my receipt and then I have what I was actually charged for it later. What I'm saying is that the day y'all left, you didn't get a copy of your extended warranty that day. No, but it's referenced in the purchase agreement. That actual document. I, there's no doubt know. that you bought one. I'm just yeah. trying to establish when you actually got a copy of this thing, right? Okay. So y'all yeah. don't have anything from the day you signed it. When right. did you obtain a copy of the extended warranty? When you say obtained a copy, do you mean in our physical possession or emailed to us? Yeah, like when you sign your lease, the yeah. landlord gives you either a physical copy or they email it to you. And then you have a historical record like here's what I signed the day I signed it. That's what I'm asking is do you have something from May of 2020 that says here's what we signed in the store that day when we bought our car? The no, we did not receive that on that date. The first time that we saw the signed copy was in 2023. That was after contacting Allstate and seeing the copy that Chevy uh, Capital Chevy sent to them. 
Okay. Um, so, so all that kind of happened at the same time. Okay. What month in 2023? May, right? Or uh, I think it's March, right? Because that was when the engine March. blew. Yeah. Okay. So now three years, almost three years passed. No issues. You're paying on the car. Life is fine. Engine has a, a failure. You take the car in to get it serviced. You want to file a warranty claim. Right. Were you denied your claim originally, or did you seek the warranty paperwork and then find out they weren't going to cover it? We were denied. Yeah, we were denied. Uh, right. We went in asking them to yeah, check the warranty coverage, and they said it expired. Okay, and who's who's who told you all that? Uh, we took it to uh, the Volkswagen dealership. Okay. And so they're the ones that- at the VW dealership, and that there they were for- they informed you that your extended warranty did not cover this this damage. That's right. Okay, and then you sought a copy of the extended warranty. Yes. And who did you did you get that from Allstate? Yes, I got the copy that they had. Um, they were able to provide one to me, and then I went to Capital Chevrolet to get the the other signed copy because I knew there's a discrepancy. It was not what we had agreed to when we purchased the vehicle. So let's take that. Let's break that down. Very, very detailed. So your claim is denied. You contact Allstate. You say, why aren't you covering my claim? It should be covered per my understanding of what I bought three years ago. And they said, well, that's not what we have. And they sent you a copy of a warranty. Right. And is that something that you submitted to the court? Yes, that's exhibit. uh, That's exhibit D. Okay, let me let me pull that up and we'll take a look at it together. And the warranty that you received from Allstate, is it signed or unsigned? It is unsigned. Okay. And that was something that the Allstate uh, manager actually was pretty shocked by. He said it was the first time he'd seen one that was unsigned. Okay. All right. So here is what we received as Plaintiff's Exhibit D. Does this look familiar, Ms. Roberts? Yes. And there are 11 pages to this. All right. And then I see signed by Elisa Roberts e-signature here, February 20th, 2024. That's something different. Your Honor, I think this included some additional documents. It was last That's two fine. years. In fact, there's some additional un- unrelated. I'm so. just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking through it, right? Usually the back of the contract is where you find a signature, but this one's got some extra things. So when I see this one, uh, on its page, it says it's six pages. So at the bottom yeah. here, you see one of six. Yeah, the first page is where there should be a signature. Mm-hmm. I don't see anything here. Yeah. Track acknowledgement. Terms and conditions. So on page one, there is no signature. There is a contract holder, Mr. Lou. I'm not really sure what that says. Mm-hmm. Um, contract sale date is completely made up. Mr. Laulamom, right? And then that's what's down here as well. I think his name was Lou, or I, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm There's not, I'm not nothing sure. whatsoever on who holds the contract. Right. Your Honor, if I may, uh, that seems to be gibberish. If you go back a couple of pages to the first page, uh, I think okay. that includes the relevant information. Okay. This one looks a little bit better. So here I have Elisa Roberts. And uh, actually, Brache, will you do me a favor? Um, oh, JC, hello. I didn't realize we had a switch out. Um, let, let me take a look at this before I go showing your VIN number or anything else to the internet. All right. Okay. So I do see it says Lisa Roberts. It's got your information at the top here, a phone number and address. It gives a very clear description of the Volkswagen Atlas. And then the contract sale, odometer reading, the 22858 vehicle sale price. Program term, 72 months, term mileage, 85,000. Contract expires in May of 2026 or when this vehicle's odometer reads 85,000 uh, 85, miles. So Ms. Mar- Ms. Roberts, I'm saying is this is what you received from Allstate and you said that cannot be what I signed? Correct. Okay. And then did you contact Capital Chevy? Yes. 
Okay. And did they have a copy of the actual signed document that you had filled out in May of 2020? Yes. And do you have a copy of that? Yeah, that's exhibit B. Okay. Let me just, um, okay, I feel more comfortable sharing my screen now that I've covered up uh, some of your, your information, right? So I've, 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 me personally, I have turned up your phone number, your email and the VIN number for the car. I just don't want to share that with the world just in case. Thank you. Okay. So on this one, I see that it says the term is 36 months with mileage of 60,000, and then it's either May 28th of 2023 or 60,000 miles, whichever occurs first. And that one has a contract holder signature and a seller's representative signature. Ms. Roberts, is this the document that you signed when you purchased the vehicle? Yes. So the difference between this one and the other one in addition to not having your signature, is that this one said it was only for 60,000 miles. Correct. But both of them otherwise are substantially the same in what they appear, and including this language here in the center that says it's either this date or when the odometer reads something. Correct. The, the contract expiration date, Your Honor, as well, is, is wrong on this one. It only went to 2023. What should it have gone to? I believe the other one was 2026. Yeah, 2026. So on this one, the mistakes are the amount of mileage coverage and the date it expires. Yes. Uh, Your, yeah. Your Honor, if I may, I think the other one was 72 months versus this being 26, and that's the reason for the discrepancy between the dates. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. I'm just, but, but on this one, there is a mistake as to the term as to the mileage and and well that's it the terms and the mileage and yeah, so miss roberts oh, your honor i apologize one one other error is, is missing a, a, or there's an issue as well um there's a box where they can check that it is a pre-owned vehicle um you you can see it on the on exhibit let's see i see it it says yeah. coverage level new pre-owned and they didn't check pre-owned they chose preferred care new that's right. And when Lisa Lisa spoke with the finance manager at uh, Capital Chevrolet, and he was able to replicate the exact transaction and check the box with or without that. And if he had, if the box had been checked, it would have been within, I think he said $78. It would have been $2,000 for the 107,000 miles. He, he said with 100% confidence, that the finance manager misclicked or or messed that up and should have it should have been 107,000 miles. And who told you that? This was Anthony Hernandez, a finance manager. For who? For Capital Chevrolet, right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Wait, 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 listen. Sorry. Let me let me say this. So, Ms. Roberts, you signed this contract, but did not notice at the time you signed it those glaring mistakes. I did not. And the because and you didn't go home with a copy of it. No, the manufacturer warranty was 72,000 miles. So it was my understanding, obviously, that they knew they had made a mistake by putting 60,000, which was below. I, I don't. That's what we're here to find out. Right. I understand what you believe to be true. Sure. What what is what what is accurate for fact is that you didn't catch it either. Correct. Right. So you bought a car. You paid extra for something and everyone just signed the documents and then you didn't take a copy home with you and you found out three years later that the thing you did sign had a mistake. So you have no way whatsoever right now. That, that's what we're getting to. Can you prove to me what you tell me you believe to be true then if you don't have any historic record of it? I think that the document in a way speaks for itself. The fact that I it was less than the manufacturer's warranty. And so I, I, I mean, obviously... I go ahead, sorry. <laughs> You didn't realize it either. No. Okay. 
Yeah, and Your Honor, I, again, I just reference that conversation with the finance manager who has access to their their internal tools and information, and like I said, could replicate the exact transaction. It could say with 100% certainty of what should have been included. That that Mr. Roberts, did you subpoena that person to appear today? Because that we, would be considered hearsay. Okay, and I do. We do have a recording of that conversation. That might be something that could come in as a historic record. When did oh. that conversation occur? Um, I'd have to, sorry, I don't have the exact date in front of me. I'd have to look that up. Sorry. Right, because what I've got here is going to be a real, you know, you signed something, but you didn't keep a copy of it at the time you signed it. You didn't notice the mistake either. The defendant at some point realized the mistake and attempted to correct it. And the question is, did they correct it correctly? or correct it wrong. So what evidence do you have to show me that you bought a warranty that was supposed to go to 107,000 miles of it other than your recollection? Yeah, so that conversation, Your Honor, was on May 25th, 2023, and we do have a recording of that. Okay, so May 25th of 2023. So in March, you made a claim, it was denied. You get a copy of the warranty from Allstate. It's not signed. You wonder what that is. It's got terms that you don't agree with. You contacted the dealer. The dealer gave you a copy of the contract that was signed. It's also got mistakes that are actually worse than the terms that the Allstate contract had, right? Right. And so then you contact the, the defendant to say, what's going on? That's not what I thought I signed. Correct. And who did you speak to? Anthony Hernandez at the Seguin location. Is that the location you purchased the vehicle from? No, because the company was uh, changed changed hands, as I understand. And they were the ones that had the information and the copy in their in their computer of, of my purchase. Okay, so you reach an Anthony Hernandez and is he able to pull up the transaction? Yes. Yes. All right, and approximately, and then you recorded the conversation? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's totally fine. Texas is a one party state. Approximately how long is the conversation? I think the entire conversation was between 10 and 15 minutes that I reported. All right. Let's hear it. Your Honor, before we get to that, can I, I mean, I know we're not in a court that, you know, you have to, you can make evidentiary objections, but I will object to this on the, these grounds. And I think you need to know this before you listen. Mr. Hernandez is not a employee or agent or representative of Capital Chevrolet Inc. He works for a separate dealership entity called Seguin Chevrolet, and he's never worked for Capital. Well, I, my understanding, he did not has never worked for Capital. But either way, he is not a uh, an agent, and so therefore, this is going to be hearsay regardless. If she had a statement, you know, by, against uh, you know by a party opponent, that would be one thing. But this is not a party opponent. This is a completely separate entity. She called up Mister. Hernandez and filled him in on the details. And Mr. Hernandez apparently shot from the hip, but he is not an agent of Capital Chevrolet Inc. or Capital Chevrolet Motors LLC. Okay. Honor, I, I have some context to provide on that as well. So Anthony Hernandez said to us that he was an employee of Capital Chevrolet at the dealership where we purchased the vehicle at the time that this purchase was made. Um, so that just, that's different than what uh, Mr. Sonning was just saying. What? As, as well, uh, Mr. Jeremy Sims, who's a general manager at Seguin Chevrolet, is someone who then took on the conversation. We worked also with Milo Reyes from, from that dealership as well. Um, and uh, Jeremy Sims, who's the general manager, is the one who spoke, uh, in his words, on behalf of the ownership of Capital Chevrolet. And when I asked him for, uh, I asked him to to get with the owners and and get a final word or see if they would make an exception to correct this issue. He was the one that provided a final statement saying that uh, that that they, the owners have decided they would not uh, they would not cover it. I do have those text messages uh, from Jeremy Sims as well. Okay, and who is Jeremy Sims? He's the general manager for the Seguin uh, Chevrolet, who is, uh, it, it is an entity that I, I believe was owned at the same time or by the same owners of Capital Chevrolet. 
at the same time of when? When you spoke to them in 2023 or in 2020 when you bought the car? Sorry, so the sequence of events is that we went to the Capital Chevrolet in Austin and they referred us to go to the dealership in Seguin, the Capital Chevrolet in Seguin. Because it changed hands. And that's who we were working with to get more information. And ultimately, they were the ones who said the owners okay. had de declined to, to cover it. Mr. Starlin, any relationship whatsoever between the your your company or your defendant, your client rather, and the Seguin Chevrolet location? No, the entities are unrelated. And I, I'll just give you some context. Uh, the principals, the dealer principals, own both Seguin Chevrolet and Capital Chevrolet. Capital Chevrolet sold, I believe, in, I think, Melissa, 2021? Yes, I, October of 2021. Yeah, October of 2021, it sold. It was sold to the, the defendant, Capital Chevrolet Motors LLC. And right, Mr. Sterling, you broke up quite a bit there. It's hard for me to hear sorry. what you just said. Hold on a second. Let me turn off my fan. Hopefully this is a little bit better. I said Seguin Chevrolet and Capital Chevrolet are owned by the same dealer principal. What, what happened is in October of 2021, Capital Chevrolet Inc. sold Capital Chevrolet, the dealership, to Capital Chevrolet Motors LLC, which is the defendant in this action. And Seguin Chevrolet is a separate, completely separate entity, although it has common ownership. And so, so it has no relation other than it has the same owners, which under Texas law, obviously, it's not an affiliate, it's not a sister corp. Um, so it's a completely separate entity. And those employees are not agents. The, the employees of Seguin are not agents and employees of Capital Chevrolet Inc. Any idea why the plaintiff would have been referred to that location for assistance? I, I think probably because that is the uh, at that dealership we've retained the records of Capital Chevrolet Inc. The okay. the because of the common ownership, Your Honor. Yeah, and Your Honor, just an additional comment. We uh, the Capital Chevrolet actually referred us there as well because they could not access uh, some of the information on the the transaction. And, okay, and, yeah. I'm gonna. Mr. Shaw, I'm going to overrule the objection. We do have, well, the rules of evidence do not apply in justice court, albeit I'm going to listen to what it is. And if it's, you know, we're going to give the weight and credibility that's necessary to give to it. If none, then it, then it won't, it won't come in, but I appreciate that. Okay. All right. So let's, let's hear the tape, right? Okay. Cause I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to say more about this. But like, and your honor, the conversation the recording started midway through the conversation, so anyway, just stop. It's Sixteen here. minutes total. Do you want the whole? Let Let me. What part's going to help me understand how your frame of mind was and what you thought you bought and whether or not you bought it? Yeah. Um, let's see. Because it's very much at its heart, it, it is a it is a contract claim. Right. Right, and so. How do I know what you bought if the thing you signed was wrong on its face? Okay. So uh, the conversation I think most relevant is like at the seven minute mark. So we can kind of, we can skip to that point. Um, and your honor, I, I'm not, I wasn't sure how to share that audio with you. When you share your screen, if you have it on your computer at the bottom, there's an option to share audio. Oh, and just... Sorry. Yep. I, it looks like it's disabled, your honor. I, I apologize. No, no, no. We, we, we don't allow people to share their screen without us intentionally enabling it. <laughs> yes. I, I have been to trade it about Zoom for courts. So we would not want that. Also, I will caution that when you share your screen, it will share everything that's open. So if you've been like browsing eBay or Etsy and you don't want the world to see what you're about to get, close those things. Good advice. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to share just this. We need to include the audio. Share sound. Okay, so this is the recording. Let me, I'll skip forward. We sold you a 72 month. Can get the audio. Oh, sorry, can you turn it Yeah. Okay, let's get this.
Okay. Uh, are you able to hear the audio, Your Honor? Let's start it. I think he's typing. He's just typing. Sorry, there's nothing here yet. You got seven minutes? Yeah, sorry. Let's do that. Um, so the $200 deductible, which retail price it retails for 26 They said that's very, very faint. Or Okay, let me turn that up. That's that's part of the old system when the when you guys got bought out. I don't know. Okay. If that has something to do with why it's not pulling up. And whose voice is that that I'm hearing? That's me. Okay. Okay. So pretty much. So he sold you a 72 months, 85,000 miles with a $200 deductible, which retail price it retails for 26 or three. Mm -hmm. And you got it for two thousand, so you had a good deal on that. Um, but if we go to use, if I were to show you the same policy, it's kind of different. Yeah. I'm sure prices went up since. I'm pretty sure, but I'm putting the dates. I'm putting yeah. the same oh, dates. Okay. So I see. usually it goes back track to that. Gotcha. You see, that's what it doesn't make no sense to me. Because if I saw, if I were to show you it's a use policy. It would take you to, so you have 22, 858 plus It would take you to 107, mm -hmm. and the price difference would have been 78 dollars. So I'm I'm almost 100 percent sure that he misclicked the new. Misclicked the new. 100 percent, because for that price difference to be only 78 dollars, mm -hmm. and because I could have sold because anybody could have sold you 72 months up to 150,000 miles and you see the price you see that's when the price goes retail is 3184 mm -hmm. but obviously it says 72 months up to 150,000 miles mm -hmm. so that would have been if, if it was going to take care of a customer that's what I will sell you. Because again, if you're going to be that person, stay with the vehicle for a long time. So. To be honest, that's the one I remember. I remember 150,000 miles. Mm -hmm. um, so none of the fact that it ends at 85 makes any sense. If it was 100 or 150, I swear I remember. I remember him saying we gave you a deal, and it's up to 150. But yeah. Well, here's the thing. Unfortunately, since it's been so long. Uh, we can't do nothing about it as far as, far as us. Uh, we can sell you a policy, but you have an existing problem. The warranty, if you even buy another policy, you, if that policy is not covered because the car needs to get inspected for me to be able to sell you a policy. Um, do you know the finance manager that did this? Uh, yeah, I think his name's on there. Isaiah, we've tried to reach out to everyone. They were like, you gotta go to the new guys. Um, Does he still want us there? I am not sure. I'm actually not sure. Is that his cell? Yeah, that's his cell. Mm -hmm. Ernesto sold you the car? Yeah, he was really helpful. He actually gave me someone else's number, but they didn't call me back. I think her name was, I can't remember what her name was, but. And your honor, I don't, I don't know that the rest is has much any more value or relevant to the conversation. But. Hey Josh, Sandy. How's it going, bud? 
Hey brother, so I got a customer over here that I is is I'm trying to help a customer. Uh, she was she bought the car at Capital uh, on 2020, okay. right? So she bought a 2029 uh, tw uh, 2019 Volkswagen Atlas with 22,000 miles, 858, right? Okay. So uh, she was under the impression that she bought an extended service contract, which she showed me the copy, and it's it's not signed by her. Uh, and she bought okay. a Premier Care new new car warranty for 72 months, 185,000 miles. So okay. she was under the impression that she was going to get an additional 85,000 miles to what her odometer statement oh. was reading. Yeah. So um, obviously I'm looking at the contract right now and it shows up to 85,000 miles. So yeah, her, 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 car policy, that's what do. yeah, so uh, at this point, I don't know what else to do because again like the policy has been for so so long ago that that uh i mean i don't know pretty much what to do and how to help this customer I mean, she's she's I pretty mean, frustrated her mileage is uh 95 not, her my car has ninety five thousand miles okay so it's expired the other coverage is already expired yeah the other coverage is already expired and what I was looking at at the Volkswagen manufacturer warranty, it comes with a six year, 72,000 mile manufacturer yeah. warranty. So pretty much yeah. she feels like she got screwed over a paying, paying a service contract for only 13,000 miles. Yeah, she barely got past what the that required is for Allstate. Um, yeah. It wasn't what we were sold. Yeah. It just absolutely wasn't what yeah. we were sold. And it's a, again, it's a, it's a capital customer and they refer they refer her back to us and uh, I, I, I don't know how to handle this you know does that make sense yeah no, I, yeah I know I know exactly what you're saying why don't you do me a favor okay um, can you send me a picture of that contract yeah absolutely and, and I'll, I'll, I'll make a few phone calls and uh, see, see what we can do see if there's anything we can do how we can help what we might be able to do and go from there Okay. Uh, is the car broken down now, or is she just trying to make sure she has coverage? No, it, it needs some work at the dealership. We're not sure exactly what yet, but I'm sure it'll okay. be significant. Yeah, the, 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 let me take a look at it. Um, Anthony, I don't know what you know could be done, obviously, at this point, yeah. but let me take a look at it and see if there's anything we can do, and then uh, I'll give you a call back. I'm, I'm headed your direction, but it's probably going to be... You know, an hour or so before I get there. Okay. Uh, but I'll come find you and give you a bit that I might have. No problem. I'll go ahead and do that. And, and just to, sorry, just to be clear, um, as I was talking here with Anthony, it's pretty clear that there was a mistake made um, because the amount that we paid for the coverage was, you know, we, we didn't do that for 13,000 miles. What we were actually told was that it would go up to 150,000 miles. Um, so, you know, talking with Anthony here, he, he also agreed that there was a mistake made. My signature is not on this up to 85,000 mile contract anywhere. They didn't show it to us. They didn't say that when the odometer reads, they did not show us that contract. So all we have from them is um, the guarantee that they made to us when we got the service contract. And I would not have paid what we did for 13,000 extra miles on an already bumper to bumper warranty. That wasn't the agreement. Oh, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't, again, I wasn't, obviously, neither Anthony nor I were there when the contract was signed, so I would never try to... Well, it wasn't the, signed. Uh, yeah, I, I guess my point is I never just, saw it. It wasn't signed by me. What they sent to Allstate wasn't signed by me. So there might be a different contract that was signed. That might just be a reprint. Like, if I go to the Allstate website and print it, Mm -hmm. I can print a copy of your contract. It wouldn't show your signature, just be a copy of your contract. Okay, we talked um, we talk to someone at Allstate. I can check with them. So I, I work with Allstate. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I can, yeah. I can get on the our website and look and pull okay. a copy of the contract. Okay. No problem. Great. But now, it would not, like I said, though, it wouldn't show your signature. It just would be a copy of the contract, just for reference. Okay. Um, the original, the original, if there were, if there were an original signed contract to be with the dealer. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't exist else. I wasn't trying to say that there should be one sign somewhere else. I was trying to you why maybe you have a copy. Might be what I'm saying. Okay, uh, I see. Uh, uh, but let me do some investigation. Let me look into it and see if there's anything that, that we can do from Allstate's perspective. Um, and then I will get right back in contact with Anthony once he sends me a copy of it. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. Have, have a good day, guys. Mr. Roberts, can you go back to the start of the conversation where he calls that gentleman? Yes, yes. 
Yeah, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I know. Like a manufacturer warranty, it comes with a six year. And she's she's How pretty close to up to eighty five thousand miles. Copy, and it's it's not signed by her. Uh, customer over here that I is. Okay, here we go. Your call has been forwarded to it. Good morning, this is Josh. Hey Josh, same thing. So you sure what How's it going, bud? Hey brother, so I got a customer over here that I it's, it's, it, I'm trying to help a customer. Uh, she was she bought the car at Capital uh, on 2020. Okay. Right. So she bought a 2029 20, uh, uh, 2019 Volkswagen Atlas with 22,000 miles, 858. Right. Okay. So uh, she was under the impression that she bought an extended service contract, which she showed me the copy and it's it's not signed by her uh and she bought okay. a premier care new new car warranty for 72 months 185,000 miles so okay. she was under the impression that she was going to get an additional 85,000 miles to what her odometer statement oh. was reading yeah. so um obviously i'm looking at the contract right now and it shows up to 85,000 miles so her, yeah, her, new car policy, that's what we're doing. yeah so uh at this point i don't know what else to do because again like the policy has been for so so long ago that okay that, uh, i mean i, I just know. want to hear what he said there. he said a new car policy that's what we do okay all right thank you so after you had those conversations with him there in seguin did you reach back out to the spot where you purchased it from? Uh, yes, we we didn't hear back from him about Allstate, and then we're just okay. you know weren't giving any more um, information or context from that point on from either party. Okay, either, either dealership, Your Honor. They, they, Your Honor, they they redirected me specifically to talk with. I started talking with Milo, um, who's like, um, I don't know, a finance man or like a sales manager. And then he referred me to Jeremy Sims, the general manager. So that was kind of the sequence, the chain of people. And Jeremy was the final person that we spoke with who, who said the owners said that they would not, um, they wouldn't make any exception or, or help us. And, and the, the crux of that conversation where I drove down to Seguin to talk to him was to you know, hear from him regarding what was expected or what would be a, a normal situation for a warranty on that car with that many miles. And as you heard, he he mentioned that, yes, if it had been me and if I was taking care of the customer, that's what I would have put in there 100 percent. And so I don't think that there was confusion on my part. I think it was an error, but I do think that we paid for and were sold, um, a you know, an extended warranty that would have covered us more significantly is that was that was the whole point of why I wanted that car. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Mr. Starlin, do you have any questions for Ms. Roberts? Um, yeah, I, I think I think I can just kind of short circuit some of it that would be good and your honor i i'd like to refer to some of the documents if that's okay. possible i had Tell me which ones you i'll pull them up well first of all the um well we've already established that the retail installment contract was signed on may 28 2020 uh if you could pull up the i guess it would be his exhibit b uh which was the service contract that was actually signed i'll show my screen so here is that one. Right. Okay. Um, Mr. Roberts, is this the vehicle service contract you signed at the time of your purchase of the vehicle? It is among many other documents, and it was it was the wrong uh, it was the wrong mileage on there underneath the manufacturer's warranty. But but that is a yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And and how many miles were on the vehicle at the time? Twenty two thousand. And if you'll read with me underneath where it states the contract term, 
it states that the term of the vehicle service contract is 36 months or 60,000 miles, correct? Correct. And if you look at the language underneath the contract term, it states in boldface capital print, this contract expires on May 28, 2023, or when the vehicle's odometer reads 60,000 miles, whichever occurs first. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And uh, it, right above your signature, if you could look at, if you can read it, it's subpart six. You see subpart six? Yes. So it says and by sign. It says, by signing below, you agree that this contract represents the entire agreement between you and us and that you have read, understand, and agree to the terms and conditions within this contract, including any state-specific requirements and disclosures. Do you see that? I do. And okay. my... That, that was my only question. Um, statement on that is that... I, I, I Ms. Ms. Roberts, I didn't ask... I just asked for a yes or no. Thank you. Um, that, is, that is a true statement. You read this agreement before you signed it, correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. And you understood that it doesn't say that you have an additional 60,000 miles past the manufacturer's warranty. It says that when the odometer reads 60,000 miles, the service contract expires, correct? Yes, I, I understand the point you're making. Thank you. Okay. And and to correct the mistake that uh, Capital Chevrolet made, it's your understanding that an additional service contract was um, provided to all state that extended the contract to 85, the uh, warranty to 85,000 miles. Is that correct? Which is not what we were sold. And the, but is that, is that correct? Mistake. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Um, now let's fast forward three years to 2023 and the vehicle broke down in, in 2023, correct? Correct. And according to your petition, the vehicle had 99,370 miles at the time it broke down. Is that right? Yes. So during that three-year period, you drove the vehicle, looks like a little more than 77,000 miles? Yeah. Okay, um, and you would agree with me, would you not, that that ninety nine thousand miles is is well past the eighty five thousand miles on the odometer? Yes. Okay. Now, when you and your husband contacted the dealership to advise that the uh, engine had broken down, the de dealership offered to repay you the two thousand dollars that you had paid for the vehicle service contract, didn't it? No. It's your position that the Dealership never offered to, to reimburse you the two thousand dollars. No, is we, it they're never offered? Yeah, that is not something the dealership ever offered. Okay. Um, and you are aware that following your purchase of this vehicle in twenty twenty, the dealership was sold to Capital Chevrolet Motors LLC. Was I aware of that after we purchased the vehicle? I, I'm asking if you're aware now. Yes. Okay. And you, you are aware that your contract is with Capital Chevrolet Inc. and not with Capital Chevrolet Motors LLC? We were not aware or sure which it was with as we were given, you know, both to go back and forth to several times. I understand. You're, you're aware now that it was with Capital Chevrolet Inc., correct? I, I'm actually still not sure of that because we were told different things by both parties. Okay. And but, but that's what you were told by Capital Chevrolet's representatives? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, pass the witness, Your Honor. Right. Uh, Mr. Roberts, anything further? Yes, Your Honor. Well, one question for Mr. Starling as well. Going back to Exhibit B, um, you know, you reference you reference line six and uh, talking about. Oh, sorry. I think I, uh, I I pulled up Exhibit B. Okay. Thank you so much. And so, yeah, talking about you. Um, the, the, the other part that I think is relevant and important to call out is we or us in that contract. And that us or we is Pablo Creek Services. And I don't know if Mr. Starling represents them as well, but uh, my understanding is that is Allstate. Um, and so this is a contract between us and Allstate. 
And this is a, an agreement that never reached the hands of Allstate. It was something that was, they, they never received. And so I, not, Just not, some, yeah. the validity of a contract, which was never submitted to the party, which was supposed to be the owner of that and, and, and be the ones that would actually service that agreement. And, and so it has zero effect, has zero value because it's in, in effect, it was not what was submitted to Allstate and what was ultimately what they use to service the vehicle. And, and but this is the one that they actually fulfilled. That's correct. Correct. And the dispute here is that y'all believe this one should have read something different. Cor correct. And, and I didn't see the one that they submitted. I, I, I get that, y'all. I got it. I understand exactly what both parties are saying, right? His position is that you should have looked before you signed and kept a copy of it. And your position is, well, I didn't think to do that and I didn't catch it and I shouldn't be held liable by it. But you have no proof thus far that you did agree to do anything beyond what they submitted other than your understandable complaint and the frustration. And there's some logic to be said, well, I wouldn't have just paid for an additional 13,000 miles. Do you have anything to indicate what you actually paid for? How much would it have cost to buy 150,000 mile coverage? Because in your conversation that I accepted over the recording, I heard you say, well, I remember it being 150,000 miles. That's so how much would 150,000 mile warranty have cost in 2020 when you bought the car? That's what he was saying in the recording was that it would have been that price. He said, we got a good deal and that's what I would have done for the customer. And that one makes the most sense and that they misclicked. But that's not a click. That is a, someone filled that in. And you also, what I, what I wrote down here as I listened is mutual mistake. Miss Roberts, you also did not, did not realize when you signed it, that it said very, very wrong things. Right. And, the defendant's counsel is not wrong when saying that you are just as responsible to understand the documents you're signing. That's why that section there that he highlighted exists. You read and understood what you signed. And it's not hidden. It's twice in the center right here. This isn't a click. This is the misclick, right? But this portion, someone typed that in and you signed your name. And so did they. That's a mutual mistake. In order for me to be able to infer from that that you actually should have gotten $150,000, I'll need more information. And a sales agent trying to mollify you in his office saying, well, I would have done something different is not proof of what you actually created at the meeting of the minds at the time you bought it in 2020. But Your Honor, it's more than just him trying to mollify or, or appease her. She, he actually had the ability to replicate the exact transaction and see down to within $78 what that $2,000 was intended to cover. And it, it made zero sense that it would be $13,000 as evidenced by the fact that Capital Chevrolet didn't submit that contract to Allstate. No, they sent the one for 85,000 miles. Which is one, yeah, it, which was a completely random and different one that, that was not one that we had agreed to either. So we, what what matters is what actually was submitted to Allstate, what went into effect. And but what I what, asked, what Allstate got apparently is an 85,000 mile coverage. And that unfortunately is not correct. What I'm trying to explain is that when he went into the computer, when I went to the office, he replicated the same make model. I don't know if that was in the part we played for you, but yeah, he did. the same make, the same model. Um, the same scenario if he was selling that $2,000 warranty. And a $2,000 warranty in no case would have only covered 13,000 more miles from that time that we had the purchase. And that's what he essentially said. And that would, if you tried to replicate that in the computer today, that's that's the same outcome. Regardless of my mistake, that was their mistake. Which is why it strikes me as a mutual mistake. Mm -hmm. And so typically what happens there is you get back your purchase price. Mm -hmm. How much did you pay for the extended warranty? $2,000. Because I understand what you're saying, right? That I wouldn't have made a bad deal. Unfortunately, in this line of work, people make bad deals all the time. People do not act in their best interest. People, I Isn't let Miss Roberts, you got to let me explain, right? Mm -hmm. People make ridiculous decisions with money on a regular basis, especially when it comes to things that are high finance. 
I don't know. And I can't supplant what, what we believe would have been in your best interest with what the facts show me, which is that at the time when you were buying it, two parties made a mistake, a clear, obvious, indi very, very important like element mistake to the very crux of the claim you're bringing. And I understand what you're saying is I wouldn't have paid for that, but I don't have any anything to get you beyond 50%. What I absolutely have evidence of is that two people both made a mistake. The dealer made a mistake and you made a mistake. The dealer recognized a mistake and then sent a different policy to Allstate. Unfortunately, that policy does not conform to what you believe you had signed, but you don't actually have anything to prove or, or create what you signed at the time because you didn't get a copy of it. Your Honor, may I ask a question? Certainly. Is then submitting that unsigned document to Allstate considered fraud? No. Hmm. How? No, okay. I, I, I recognize you're frustrated. I do. What I'd say is um, pay attention when you sign something. Always get a copy of it, especially if it's something that's supposed to be your insurance policy, right? And I, I, having done a lot of these, I've never seen one where they added it to the current mileage either. I think if you were buying up to 150,000 miles, that would have made more sense. But I don't I, I don't have anything that indicates that, right? What I've got is you paid $2,000 and you believe you got a $150,000 policy. Even taking, even if I take that to be true, it's not been established conclusively. Okay. So we should have established conclusively that in the in the computer where he was looking everything up and that we thought that phone call would establish the price and the cost. There's a lot of hearsay in that phone call. And honestly, in county court at law, it probably wouldn't have come in at all. But we don't have rules of evidence for justice. And we try to be a little bit more expansive in allowing people to bring in information to see if it can get us where we need to go. Right. Let's say is that clearly a mistake occurred. That mistake is on both sides. What you're wanting is me to honor the policy you believed you have and then make them liable for the cost of your repair. That I cannot get to. I absolutely can find, though, that because of the mutual mistake, maybe you didn't get the benefit of the bargain you thought. Although I think Mr. Starling's probably going to argue back pretty clearly that, no, you did. You got up to 85,000 miles, which is what you paid for. And, right, I. Yes, Your Honor, but there's a 72-month, 72,000-mile uh, warranty baked into as a bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. From I, the I get it. Why would you have paid money for only 13,000 miles more? I, I don't know. People buy insurance on flights they're taking two days later. That's true. That was not our understanding. Right? I, 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 I get that, Ms. Roberts. I believe. I, I don't just, what I'm saying is that legally what you've got to do is show me more likely than not. And what I've seen is a very likely case. But the burden is on the plaintiff to get more than, than that. I, we did our best to get all all that we could from two dealerships that were pawning us off on one another, and we worked as hard as we could to get the information that they would honestly give us. And that's the point of that recording: is we did everything we in our power to what we had available. It's hard to recreate the past, which is why historic records are very important. So, a copy of the contract at the time you signed it, right? It wasn't included in your documentation. And you did not, it didn't, you didn't think about it until you needed it. Yeah. And then at the time you needed it, that's when all of this was discovered, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Starling, anything further to add? No, Your Honor. I mean, I'm, I'm curious, how much would it have cost for a 150,000 mile warranty? It was $2,000. Miss Roberts, I didn't ask you that. You're doing a bad job advocating for yourself because you keep interrupting. I'm on mute. All right. Putting on mute. Your Honor, I unfortunately, I, I, I'm probably about as ignorant of this as, as everybody else. I your uh, witness. Ms. She's the finest person, Olive, right? Miss Olive can maybe, <laughs> Miss Olive's the controller, but I, I, I don't know that she can answer either, but I'll let her answer. Because, you know, the guy on the phone, he was able to plug it in and calculate it out and say, this is what it would have cost back then. Right. Melissa, do you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I I don't know what the cost of the warranty would have been. Um, like you said, I'm the controller, some backside of um, finances. Um, whatever Anthony was recreating in a system was not 
Capital Chevrolet system either because he was not employed by Capital Chevrolet either um, at any point um, and including at the time. So what he was creating, it's hard to say because I would have to, again, see what he had input and what he was saying. Uh, I can't. I don't have any information on that, I guess. <clears throat> There are a lot of witnesses that would have been helpful that neither party brought, right? Ms. Ms. Roberts, you could have subpoenaed lots of people. Mr. Starling only brought one witness as well. Um, all right, final statements from everyone. Ms. Roberts, you have the right to go ver to go last with a statement. So would you like to go before Mr. Starling or after him? Or technically you can go first and last, but I'll go ahead. Okay, Mr. Starling, closing statements. Yeah, Your Honor, I, I don't know that I'm going to beat a dead horse here, so I don't, I think we're just going to stand on what we've already said. All right. Ms. Roberts? To the best of our ability, we brought the information that we had. I did know that Texas was a one-party recording state, and I tried to get as much information as possible from Anthony. Um, you know, we've stated our case. It was a, that was a big hit to take to have an almost $12,000 engine failure at 99,000 miles and the care that we did take to assume that it was covered was, I acknowledge our mistake, but we did do everything that we could after the fact to get it rectified um, to our ability. Okay. I am. Um, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much today. Um, I absolutely, Ms. Roberts, I, I, that's a lot of money. I empathize entirely. The, the burden of proof in the in the courts will always be on the plaintiff who brings the action. In a civil case like this, the standard is more likely than not. So I find it likely that you purchased, uh, that, you know, that you were trying to do that. But I, I don't know. And while I think it's likely, I think the fact that there is a clear opportunity for that mistake to have been cured and for you to have had evidence that you kept at the time of the purchase to be something that is is, is difficult for me to overcome, right? Um, I do think, though, it would be not unreasonable here for what I've got to find that a mutual mistake occurred and that though you may have thought you were buying something different. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000, which was the purchase price of the warranty, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Both parties are welcome to appeal that decision, but I think that's probably reasonable under the circumstances. All right. Good luck to all parties. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks, Your Honor. All parties are excused. Your involvement in a dispute with another party such as this, and they just can't seem to work it out. Don't resort to taking the law into your own hands. You we'll take... hear the litigants' reaction right after these messages. All right. Thank you very much. Officer Bell's waiting for you, and that will bring this case to a conclusion. <laughs>